Hey folks and welcome to Truck King. 2024 is the year of the mid-sized truck. Of course, we just got this brand new Tacoma from Toyota. Chevy fully redesigned the Colorado and Canyon and the new Ford Ranger for North America just dropped. So in this video, I'm gonna talk over my thoughts on all three of these trucks and how they compare. Let me first start by just setting the video up. I'm not gonna dive into Ranger Raptor, ZR2, TRD Pro, especially because we haven't even driven the TRD Pro yet, so I can't really comment on those. This is just talking about the standard versions of all of these mid-sized trucks. And yes, I did not forget that the Jeep Gladiator and the Nissan Frontier exist, but quite frankly, they're getting a little old now. So I just wanna talk about the three guys which are new in the segment. And the first thing we should discuss is just straight up styling. Now I think of the three, the Chevy Colorado made the biggest departure from its previous styling. And the Tacoma here, it was more of, you know, an evolutionary styling jump, and so was the Ranger. Now, to my eyeballs, the Ranger actually stands out the most in this segment because it's not so angular and angry looking. Now, the reason for that is because it's a worldwide product. That Ranger has to sell here in South Africa, in Europe, in Australia, and quite frankly, North American tastes are different than the rest of the world. And if I just base it on what I see out of car styling and off-road vehicle styling, North Americans like angry vehicles. This Tacoma looks angrier than it did before. The Colorado looks way more pissed off than it did before. Whereas the Ford Ranger, yeah, it's still a little rounded. It doesn't have so many sharp angles to it. And that's kind of my take on it is because it has to suit worldwide tastes. Now, if you're asking me which one looks the best, I do lean towards the Chevy Colorado. I really like that angular styling on it. But of course, this is totally subjective. So now please weigh in right off the bat. Which one of these three trucks looks the best to your eyes? Let's talk powertrains. The Ranger is the only one of the bunch to actually still offer a V6, but it's also a turbocharged V6. Now it's not here yet, so I haven't driven it, but it is coming. So just in terms of powertrain options, the Ford Ranger does offer the most, especially when you consider the Ranger Raptor that has its own unique engine. So yes, powertrain options, Ford takes that. Toyota's gonna have the hybrid max setup, which once again, we have not driven, but it is coming. But let me just speak to power from this turbo as it sits, from the base Ford Ranger, and then in the Chevy Colorado. I've driven all three of them quite a bit. And yes, the Colorado at 310 horsepower does feel more powerful than this Toyota does feel a little more powerful than the Ranger. I will say I've never been a huge fan of how the Colorado delivers its power. I just always feel like I have to dig into that pedal harder to get the power I want, whereas the Toyota and the Ranger feel like they come on a little bit lower in the rev range. However, overall power, yes, the 310 does feel better than the 270 and the 278. But overall, these three engines, it's not a massive power difference. Now, once the hybrid gets in here, that's gonna severely change the characteristics of the Tacoma. So that will be interesting to compare, especially to that three liter V6 in the Ranger Raptor, because that thing is a monster. Now, when it comes to transmissions, we have an eight-speed auto in the Tacoma, an eight-speed auto in the Colorado, and a 10-speed auto in the Ranger. So yes, Ford keeps that 10-speed. And then you cannot forget, Toyota still offers a manual. They're the only one of these three to still offer it. It is a six-speed manual, and I do love that they kept it as an option. Although, you can only get the Toyota manual on the base engine, you're not gonna be able to get it with the hybrid. So there are some kind of slight power differences, but the truth is, all of these companies have done the same thing, taken the same approach, and all of these little turbo four cylinders, yeah, they really do feel pretty similar. 
Let's talk towing and payload, and this is an interesting story. So first of all, the Chevy Colorado tows the most at 7,700 pounds. The Ford Ranger right behind it at 7,500 pounds. And then the Tacoma here does fall a bit short. So yes, if you do want to tow at those max limits, you're not going to go for the Tacoma. Although I will say if you're towing 7,000 pounds regularly, you should probably consider a larger truck, but that's neither here nor there. Just looking at the numbers, yes, the Colorado tows the most. Now talking about payload, and I'm not gonna just quote the max payload numbers, I could do that, but the truth is so few trucks actually make it out of the factory with those max payload numbers that it just makes way more sense always to look at the door jam sticker to see what the specific trucks we drive can actually carry. Now this Tacoma as it sits has a payload of 1200 pounds. This is the TRD off-road. Uh, we've been in a whole bunch of Colorados and canyons. Those are usually floating between 12 and 1300 pounds as far as what I've seen. And then I do have to commend the Ford Ranger. Hopefully you watched my first drive video that recently went up on the channel. Every single Ford Ranger I got into, including the Lariat, you know, top trim luxury model, had a payload over 1,500 pounds. Now, once the bigger V6 EcoBoost shows up, that will change, because assumably that's a heavier engine, so that'll take some payload off of there. But yes, just straight up from what I've seen, the Ranger absolutely has the best real world payload number. Let's talk about truck beds now. And the first thing I have to mention is that the Tacoma is the only one of these three to offer a long bed option. The other two brands don't do that. Ford and Chevy say our trucks are crew cab, short bed only. Now, every time you ask them about this, the answer is always the same. We listen to customers. The take rate on the longer bed and the smaller cab is usually less than 10%. So they basically said, yeah, that's not enough people to justify the manufacturing costs. So they got rid of them. It's still a bit of a frustrating decision. It's always been a classic thing with pickup trucks that you could choose a longer bed if you wanted it because a lot of folks don't need to haul people. They need to haul stuff. So I commend Toyota for still allowing us to get a long bed. Now, speaking on the beds themselves, they've also become quite similar these days. All of them have power, different plugs of some kind. I will point out that here on the Toyota over here in this little flap, there's actually a couple USB-C ports. That is unique. None of the other trucks have USB ports, but plugs and 12 volt outlets, yes, they do have. Now, the other thing that's unique here on the Tacoma, this is the composite bed, right? It's not steel, it's high density, durable plastic. And you know what? I do like it. It has its advantages and disadvantages. Biggest advantage in my head is this bed should be able to take an absolute beating. It's never going to show rust. You're not going to show the paint chipping off of it. Nothing like that. So this is likely one of the more durable beds out there. And of course, it's never going to rust. That's always a positive. Now, easily the biggest negative on the composite bed is it's slippery. In the wintertime, it gets a bit wet, gets a bit icy. This stuff is quite slippery. So there's some positives and some negatives to the composite. That's going to be based on what you're doing with it. If I was to buy this Tacoma, I would throw down one of those bed mats on the floor just to make sure it gives you more of that grip. Heck, even a sheet of plywood in here would probably give you a little bit more grip. And now talking about the sizes, let me throw up all the numbers here so you can see how the sizes of these beds compare. Now I want to discuss interior comfort. So first thing, you've probably seen this in our other Tacoma videos, the Tacoma seating position has been fixed. Toyota increased what is called the hip to heel ratio. So yes, my butt is just literally sitting higher now. The last gen Tacoma, you always felt like you were sitting on the floor. It was an uncomfortable seating position. In here, I am much more comfortable. And you know what, it's a bit of a tall seating position, but I'm okay with that. I like that in a truck, especially an off-road truck. And I will actually say that the Chevy is the opposite and the GMC Canyon. That thing has a low seating position, not like you're on the floor, but you're sitting down in that cab. It's got a bit more of a sporty feel to it, but when you are off-road, you want that clearance and the views. And I'll say that the GM Twins don't have it as much. And then the Ford Ranger is maybe right there in the middle, a nice, decent seating position, not too tall, not too short. And I was fully comfortable in that truck too. So front seat space, I wouldn't worry about any of them. 
And a reminder, I'm 6'2", 300 pounds. But the back seats are where they do set themselves apart. Now we can look at the numbers, but just forget about that for a second, because I've been in all of these back seats and I have to rank them right now. The Tacoma here is the tightest. It's the smallest back there, especially if you step up to that TRD Pro with the isodynamic seats, you get not a lot of space. And you might notice that I got my car seats in the back right now. When I'm driving, even with my front facing car seat behind me, I'm pulled quite a bit forward. The, the Chevy and the GMC are second on the list. We had four guys in a GMC Canyon when we shot our Sudbury series. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. Um, we had four full-size adults in there and the back seat is, is tight, but it is enough for a full-size adult. Nobody was complaining. So I put the Chevy second and then I was just in that Ford Ranger. I came away incredibly impressed with how much rear seat space there is. And not just leg room, I actually even feel like those seats, you just sit deeper into them. And even just buying yourself an extra inch because the seat is a bit deeper, it makes a big difference. So once again, I do have to remind you, it's a marginal difference. This is not, you know, massive spaces that are different from each truck. But if I had to rank them, Ford's number one, GM's number two, Toyota's number three for rear seat comfort. So far, I've given you all of my thoughts and feelings on these three trucks because I have spent a bunch of time in all of them. But right now, let's go sit down and talk about what is arguably the most important part, that is pricing and how the features compare at each price level. Now we're back here in the office and I know I've shared a lot of my feelings on these trucks, but now let's dive into the facts. Which one is the most affordable? And we're gonna do First US and then we'll also do Canadian pricing. So in the United States, the most affordable of the three is the Chevrolet Colorado starting at $31,095 for a two wheel drive work truck. Now step up, you're gonna move to the Ford Ranger coming in at $34,265. And then we get to the Toyota Tacoma at $35,260 US. And one interesting note on the Tacoma, the base model is actually the double cab, and then you pay slightly more to get into the extra cab model, which is the one with the shorter cab, longer bed, and no rear seats. And that's not traditionally the way it was, so there's an interesting little difference there. And then finally, I can't forget about the GMC Canyon, but it does feel like an outlier in this group of trucks because it comes with more standard equipment and GM has made sure to really differentiate Colorado from Canyon. So the Canyon is the most expensive of the bunch, starting at $37,595 US. Now let me hit you with base Canadian pricing and the steps here actually stay the same. So we start with the most affordable, that is the Chevrolet Colorado, even here in Canada. Here it starts at $38,430 Canadian and that is for a two wheel drive version of the Colorado. And actually Chevy is the only one that offers two wheel drive in Canada. The Ranger and the Tacoma have it built in as standard equipment. So I really appreciate that Chevy still offers Canadians a choice. I don't like that we are usually forced into taking all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. So thanks Chevy for giving us the choice. Now if you did step up with just a four-wheel drive base Colorado, your price is going to be $42,000. $330, which still undercuts the competition because then we get to the Ford Ranger, which has a base price in Canada of $44,065. And finally, the Toyota Tacoma, which here in Canada has a base price of $50,000. $12. Yes, Toyota really aggressively priced the Tacoma. It's a large step above its competitors when it comes to price. And Canadians get fewer trims than what is available in the United States as well. We have a whole different trim walk. But just looking at the base prices, yeah, you, you, there's just no value whatsoever in that Toyota Tacoma. Even the GMC Canyon in Canada is actually less expensive than the Tacoma. It starts at 
$529. So now I've spit out all the base prices. The other thing I do want to touch on is the base power because it's not the same as the upgraded power plants. So the Chevrolet Colorado at the base level gets 237 horsepower and 260 pound feet. That's from the same 2.7 liter turbo four. The Toyota Tacoma at the base level gets 228 horsepower, 243 pound feet of torque. That is again from the same 2.4 liter turbo four. And this is one area where the Ford Ranger really shines. It doesn't have a so-called base engine tuning because Toyota and Chevy just take the regular engine and detune it for the base models. Well, Ford isn't doing that. So you're actually getting a lot more power at the base level because the Ranger makes 270 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. So at the absolute base level, yeah, the Ranger does stand out as offering quite a bit more power. The GMC Canyon at the base level does offer the upgraded tune as well. That's 310 horsepower. So it does give you that extra power bump, but of course compared to the Ranger, yeah, it's also more expensive. So looking at sort of price to power, I would say the Ranger is your best bet. Now there's some other features I wanna mention at the base level though, which do differentiate these trucks. And I'm only scratching the surface here. There's so many more things to dig into, but I'm gonna call out a few things that kind of caught my eye. So first of all, in the Chevy Colorado, you get the 11 inch infotainment screen and the fully digital driver's gauge cluster in every single trim. So right from work truck straight up through ZR2, you're getting the big screens. So if the big screen matters to you, the Colorado is the one to get. Uh, the Tacoma, the thing that stands out there to me is Toyota Safety Sense 3.0. That's a whole suite of active driving systems, things like lane departure, auto high beams, full speed range dynamic radar cruise control, which again, in a base vehicle, getting that adaptive cruise is a nice feature and it's the only one here that has it straight from the base level. You're also getting push button start in the Tacoma from base and a damped tailgate along with pre-collision alert. So there's a lot of things built into the Tacoma from base, which the other trucks don't have, mostly thanks to Toyota Safety Sense. Let's look at some higher prices now. So first of all, in the mid levels, it's sort of hard to compare because there's so many different trim levels. Some companies have more or less. Ford only has three trim levels for the Ranger. Toyota has six trim levels for the Tacoma so far. That's not even including TRD Pro and Trail Hunter. So yeah, sort of finding the exact comparisons in that mid-level can be a little tough, but I'll give you a price range. Those mid-level trucks are going from about 36 to 42 ish thousand dollars in the United States and then of course that's more in Canada where the mid-level trucks are closer to the mid 40 45 to 50 thousand dollar range now again I didn't want to get too deep into those mid-level comparisons because you're going to spend so much time looking at different packages and how they compare so let's just jump up to the top level now and talk about the most expensive versions of these trucks Outside of the Tacoma, it's all off-road versions that dominate the price walk of these trucks. So we start with the Chevy Colorado ZR2, which has a base price in the US of $48,395. Then you step up to the Toyota Tacoma Limited. Now, of course, that's the luxury truck. We still don't have pricing on TRD Pro or Trail Hunter. That should be coming soon and I would expect them to be expensive because yes, the Limited is even more than the ZR2 and guaranteed the TRD Pro and Trail Hunter will be more than the Limited. But anyways, in the United States, the Tacoma Limited is $52,100 and that's just with the turbo engine too, not even with the hybrid. So even the Limited is probably gonna get more expensive Ranger, once they bring the that hybrid engine online. Looking at the Ranger, the truck that sits atop the heap is the new Raptor, which in the United States sells for $55,470. Oh yeah, and don't forget about the GMC Canyon, the AT4X in the US goes for 55,000. 895. So when you look at all those prices together, the ZR2 definitely looks like a good deal. For the Canadians, the price walk stays the same, 
But yeah, the Ranger's a little bit crazy. We'll talk about that. So the Colorado ZR2 starts at $60,730 Canadian. Then you step up to the most expensive Tacoma available today in Canada, and this is April 2024, is the Tacoma off-road premium which sells for $61,412. The reason it's not the Limited is because Canadians are only going to get the hybrid engine in the Limited and of course the hybrid is not online yet so once the hybrid shows up we'll get that hybrid Limited and the Tacoma will be even more expensive but for now Canadians can pay up to $61,412 for it and then we get to the Ford Ranger Raptor which in Canada is priced at $80,000, $81.40 to be exact. Yeah, it feels like an outlier. It feels like Ford is really staking their claim as, you know, one of the best midsize trucks out there, and you're going to pay for it. We'll see if Toyota really tries to match that with TRD Pro and Trail Hunter, considering how expensive the Tacoma is in Canada. I could see those trucks being $80,000 trucks as well, but... Man, the pricing, especially here in Canada, is feeling a little bit out of control. And then finally, we do have to talk about that GMC Canyon for the AT4X. You're looking at $67,829 Canadian. Well, folks, there you have it. You've seen all the prices. And just at a quick glance, without diving into all of those trim levels, it does look like the Chevy Colorado probably offers the most value in the segment. It has the best base prices. And then even the ZR2, and compared to the Raptor or even the AT4X, feels like good value. And that is one heck of a capable mid-size off-road truck. So just looking at those extreme prices right at the bottom and right at the top, yeah, General Motors is offering some of the most value in the mid-size segment, but it is also safe to say that all of these trucks have become more expensive, and that's just a trend we're seeing across pickup trucks. So once again, I feel like we've said this in many videos, but all we can do is wait and see how the market responds. Will truck sales continue? To go up, well, that remains to be seen. So yeah, 2024 will be an interesting year to watch truck sales and see if these sky-high prices remain. Because so far, the story has basically been the same. Manufacturers keep charging more, and we keep paying it, and they keep telling us that they haven't found the ceiling yet. So they keep pushing up and up and up, and we keep on buying trucks. So when that trend changes, then I expect prices to change. But until then, yeah, sadly, I think we just have to uh, get used to expensive pickup trucks. Well, folks, like I said, that's it for this one. I don't have a clear winner to declare in this comparison. Honestly, I did want to share some of my opinions, but for the most part, I just want to show all three of these trucks and some of their major differences because yes, one thing might work better for you. Do you prioritize a longer bed? Well, Tacoma is your option. Do you really want rear seat space? Well, obviously the Ranger will work well for you. And then do you want an affordable off-road monster? Well, the ZR2 will save you a few bucks. So each one of the trucks has their pros and cons and I did my best to lay them out. And of course I wanna hear from you, so go below into the comments. Let me know what you think of everything I said and which one of these three you would buy. As always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to Trucking to see what we're testing next. So